Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In today's video I'm going to show you how to secure your Home Assistant instance while keeping it available from the outside. Now the beauty of this method is that when you will try to connect to your Home Assistant from the outside, the door will be open. For everyone else out there, the door will be completely closed. Now I have seen tutorials out there showing how to use services like Duck DNS and opening ports on your firewall. These methods might all work, but the problem is they work for you and for everyone else that's trying to hack into your home assistant and I guarantee someone is trying. So this method might not be the easiest to implement, but besides using a VPN, this will be the most secure method to implement and it might not be even the cheapest one to implement because you will need a domain. If you don't have one, you will need to get one. Some registrar gives them for free, some not. You will need a domain. So my recommendation is watch this video start to finish. You will see that this demon is not so scary at all. And then rewind the video, open a new browser tab and do all the steps together with me. I will explain every step why we are doing it and why it's needed and you will succeed also, I guarantee it. So let's go over to the computer and start doing stuff. Join me. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and before we start diving in, I just want to say that everything I'm about to show you here is based on a blog post by Matthew Hodgkins. I will put a link to his blog post in the description of this video. Problem is I have encountered a few cases where his blog post goes down, becomes unavailable, takes a few days until it becomes back online. Don't worry, everything that's mentioned there is mentioned here and more. There are a few additional steps I'm adding, so I will definitely give the credit to Matthew Hodgkins and the link to his blog post will be in the description. I want to spend just a minute on this whiteboard because it's important to me to explain what's the difference between the methods of making our uh, uh, home assistant secure and available from the outside. The first one is the one that I've seen many articles about is just using a dynamic DNS and port forwarding on your firewall. For example, Duck DNS. So when you register to Duck DNS, it also grabs a Let's Encrypt certificate for you. That's great. but Bottom line is, and, explain, and excuse, excuse me for dramatically oversimplifying the process, but it's just for illustration. When you query your DuckDNS hostname, you query DuckDNS servers, they reply back with a correct IP address uh, for your instance. And then your computer takes this IP address and tries to access it. According to the port forwarding rules on your firewall, your firewall then takes the, sh the session to your internal Home Assistant server. Now, this works, but there's nothing stopping an attacker. And of course, attackers don't care about your DuckDNS hostname. They don't care about it because they scan the internet by IP addresses, by subnets. So when they encounter your IP address and they see a port is being opened, there's nothing stopping them from continuously trying to exploit your firewall to get into your home assistant. There's nothing stopping them. It's just a matter of time before they succeed in doing it. And in our method, what we are actually doing is our computer reaches Cloudflare proxy servers. Now Cloudflare masks, they give a reply with a bogus, not a bogus, a real, but a proxy IP address when behind the scene, they create a session on your behalf. They know the real destination that you are trying to reach. They just don't show it to you. So they, on your behalf, go over to the correct address, which is in case in this case will be your firewall. And according to the port forwarding rules that we'll configure, they will be able to take your session and go over to your home assistant instance. The difference is when we're creating, when we will be creating port for the rules, we will only create them for Cloudflare's uh, IP addresses and an attacker that will try to scan your firewall will see the door as completely closed. So that's the main difference. And of course, on top of that, 
we will uh, take a few other measures to further close down the excess and this will be covered towards the end of the video but that's the main difference this will create a door that's open just for you if someone from the outside try to scan tries to scan your uh, your firewall your ip address you will you will see the door is completely closed that's the main difference so guys in order to create uh, this kind of uh, security and remote access we will go over to Cloudflare. Now, as I said, you will need a domain, so you have either spend a few dollars on, on purchasing a domain on Cloudflare, or if you get a free one, you can transfer it to Cloudflare. Bottom line is that you need a, a DNS in Cloudflare. I have mine, let's, uh, let's call it production uh, domain and a test domain. So it doesn't matter, both of them are actually real real domains so in order in order to start the process we need to create uh, records in our dns so i will enter my dns and go to the dns tab right here now there are a few steps a few options we have here the first one is to create an a record an a record is the most basic uh, form of dns record it's just a host name that will point to an IP address. So what you will be able to do is to create a record, name it whatever you want, and then give your, in this case, your IP address that was given to you by your ISP. This will be, of course, a complete bogus one. Now I can already hear you complaining and saying, well, thanks for nothing because I have my IP address I don't have a static IP address, my IP address changes from time to time and if I had a static IP address I wouldn't need to go through this process in the first place and I can already tell you, don't worry, first of all it's not correct because even if you have a static IP address I really recommend you do this process because you shouldn't have to expose that address to the outside and don't worry, towards the end of the video I will show you how to use the Cloudflare integration inside Home Assistant that will give you a dynamic DNS-like functionality that will keep the record that you have just created always up to date with the IP address given by your ISP. So don't worry about it. The second option that you have here is to create a record that's called a C name. And what's a C name? It's a host name pointing to another host name. And if you are, like me, a Synology user, you already have a dynamic DNS service for free from Synology. And I also know for a fact that QNAP gives their users a free dynamic DNS service as well. So you will be able to, you will be able to create a C name, name it whatever you want, and then the target will be something dot Synology dot me for example all right so let's say we already have uh, a record in this case i have created a c name record that points towards my test uh, site where i already created uh, a test home assistant instance and let's say we want to test to see that the dns has already taken place by the way it can take time from a few several seconds to a 15 20 minutes so be patient and let's try to ping our newly created c name and the dot will be the rest of my domain name and as you can see cloudflare has already started to reply and i, I can guarantee that this is not the IP address given to me by my ISP. This is a Cloudflare proxy IP address. In fact, there can be nothing behind this uh, uh, DNS record and it will still get a reply from, one, from a, a, a proxy server from Cloudflare. So this is how easy it is to create the first step as an entity, a DNS record in Cloudflare. Doesn't matter if it's an A record or a C name. The next thing that we need to do is actually change some configurations in Home Assistant because by default 
Home Assistant uses HTTP on port, I think it's 8123. And we need to change a few settings there. First, we need to tell Home Assistant to start working on HTTPS and to change the port. By the way, I don't, I don't usually use 443. I will choose, maybe you will choose 8443 or 2053. There are a few ports that you can choose from. Let's go over and I will show you my configuration.yaml file on my home assistant. So this is, of course, I will, I will give you the snippet of this code. It will be in the description of the video. This is how you tell the Home Assistant server to change its port. And we will, of course, get a certificate from, let's, from Cloudflare. This is how you tell Home Assistant to, to use these certificates. We'll also enable IP ban. Uh, for, uh, this will uh, this is also uh, uh, always useful. We are we will then tell Home Assistant to accept connections from proxy servers, and then we will tell Home Assistant which IP segments are our trusted proxies. All right. So I will take this snippet of code, and I will go to my test Home Assistant server. I will make sure my Visual Studio Code add-on is enabled. And I'm going to paste in my snippet of code. So I will tell this server to also use 2053 as its port. I will, of course, provide proper certificates for uh, 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 to use HTTPS and not get uh, uh, the annoying red uh, uh, URL uh, uh, warning. And I've also mentioned the Cloudflare proxies. And now it's time for us to actually grab these certificates from Cloudflare and place them on our Home Assistant server. So the first thing I want to make sure is that my Samba add-on is also running. Now, I do recommend that you configure the Samba share add-on with a, a, a username and a, a, a complex password. And at least that's my recommendation. Keep it stopped when you're not using it. I know that some people like to use it on so that they can uh, edit their configuration file even without going into their Home Assistant web interface. It's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of opinion here. My opinion is to keep it uh, this Samba Share add-on stopped when you're not needing it. All right, so let's try to go into our Samba share. All right, great. We will grab the certificate files. I will show you how to, and we will place them inside the SSL folder right here. All right, so we are logged in and let's see how we can create a certificate for our domain to enter into Home Assistant. Let's go to our domain and go to SSL TLS tab right here and click on origin server. Click on create certificate. Leave everything at default, even the 15 years option right here and click on create. As you can see, you get two blocks of text. Open up a notepad or a wordpad, your choice. Take the first block of text and paste it here. Save it, preferably on your desktop and save it as origin.pem. Open a new file, take the second block, copy, paste, and save it as privkey.pem. Alright, so now we need to delete the .txt suffix, click on yes. 
and click on yes. All right, now we have our two uh, certificate files and we can simply drag and drop them onto our Home Assistant folder. All right, so now we have our certificate files inside our Home Assistant folder. We can close that. We can go back to our Home Assistant instance. Again, go to configuration, settings, check configuration, and now everything is valid. This is where we need to restart Home Assistant. And usually on this kind of changes, I like to restart Home Assistant completely. So I'm going to Supervisor, System, and Reboot Host. Now, at this point in time, all we have left to do in order to start testing and seeing that our configuration is working is to create port forwarding rules. Now, for this demonstration, I've already created uh, a generalistic port forwarding rule that will allow uh, almost anything to go through. And of course, I'm not going to keep it that way. Just for testing purposes, I'm going to uh, create, uh, I created a wide open rule and I'm going to uh, um, uh, close it down both on my firewall and both on Cloudflare. All right, so at this point, after Home Assistant has rebooted, we can now, after we have a, a, a wide port forwarding rule pointing port, in our case 2053, into our Home Assistant server, let's try. So now let's try to access Home Assistant server with the full HTTP address we have given it in Cloudflare and colon our port. And look at that, we are able to get in, we have our, our connection secured with a certificate. And the most, and the beautiful thing is when we reached Home Assistant, actually it's not really us who reached out, it's Cloudflare using its proxy address, masking uh, the real IP address of our Home Assistant. That's great, meaning that everything we have done up to this point is working. Now it's time to minimize the access uh, to Home Assistant and only allow Cloudflare's uh, proxy servers to access. Every, everyone else will get a door a closed answer. And we do that by stricting down our uh, port forwarding rules. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm using a Unify firewall, so I'm going to show you how to do it in Unify, of course your uh, 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 firewall might be different and the interface might be different. And this is our port forwarding. And this is how we need to do it. At least in Unify, the interface is not very convenient when you want to create uh, one rule for several subnets. Your, uh, I know that in uh, PFSense, for example, you can create an alias and then do one firewall rule and mention the alias. Sadly, in Unify, it's not like that but we need to know the entire list of uh, Cloudflare uh, addresses. We can take them from our configuration file. These are the addresses and we can also find them if we search for Cloudflare IP addresses. First result and for my convenience, I'm going to click on the text link and these are the addresses we need to allow the port forwarding to. Everyone else will not be able to go through. So I'm going to do one just as an example. You will need to do multiple, at least if you're a Unify user, one for each subnet. All right, taking the first one and create a new forwarding rule. Let's call it HA1, enable when and from click on limited, click on paste, port, our port is, in our case, is 2053, and we are pointing it to our cloud, to our, sorry, home assistant address, and the forwarding port will be also 2053 and TCP. So you will need to create several of these. In fact, I think there are 14, uh, uh, Cloudflare addresses and at this point you will delete your wide or generalistic port forwarding rule if you created one to test the access 
All right, guys, moving on to the next topic. We have created a situation where your home assistant is secure and with a certificate and is only available to Cloudflare. No one else can get in. All of this will mean absolutely nothing if your user uh, has a short password of 1234. Because at some point, someone or an attacker or someone else might get a hold of your Cloudflare DNS host name and get into the login portal of your home assistant. And at some point, someone might just might guess your password. This is why we are reaching to the bottom side of our funnel here. And this is our local username on home assistant. We need to give our user a strong password. And I can't stress this enough use multi-factor authentication. It's really easy to configure in Home Assistant. You just need to go into your Home Assistant instance. If you haven't done so already, go into your username tab right here. Scroll down into multi-factor authentication modules. Click Enable. Now, the enablement of two-factor authentication depends on what application you're using on your mobile phone. It can be a, a Google Authenticator, a Microsoft Authenticator, whatever you choose, scan the barcode and you will be enrolled into two-factor authentication. Make sure that you do. Don't skip this step. Don't think that the Cloudflare proxy stuff is going to give you 100% protection. Don't skip on this step, do it. Now, after you've done all our steps, got your certificate, got your port forwarding, only uh, uh, configured towards Cloudflare services, you've enabled to uh, factor authentication. What else can we do to further close down our, uh, 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 our instance? We can use a, a, um, a firewall rule on Cloudflare. Let's go back to Cloudflare, go into our domain, and this time go into firewall and go to firewall rules. All right, so let's say you want to access your home assistant instance from outside your network. You are located, for example, in Canada. And let's say someone somehow got a hold of the real Cloudflare DNS hostname you have given your home assistant. If we configure the firewall rule the way we'll configure it right now, if this attacker is outside of Canada, he will not even be able to reach your, uh, your firewall because Cloudflare will be the one to stop him uh, right there. So let's create a firewall rule, give it a name, and hostname equals the hostname you have created in Cloudflare. Click on end, select country, not equal Canada, action is block. Click on deploy. And this is uh, another way we can further close down our, uh, H, our uh, home assistant availability to only be reachable if this condition of, in this case, being in Canada is uh, fulfilled. If not, Cloudflare will stop the attempt even before reaching out to your firewall. That's a great nifty feature right there. One other thing I want to show you before uh, finishing up this video is, as I said, we can create records in Cloudflare, which is either a C name. If you have a Synology NES, you can point your uh, 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 you can point your DNS hostname to your Synology device hostname, or you can create a regular A record and give it the IP address that you have given from your ISP. And then you will say, but my, ISP, but my IP that I'm getting from my ISP changes every once in a while. And this is exactly uh, uh, the purpose of this Cloudflare integration in Home Assistant. I'll show you exactly how to use it. 
will go back into Home Assistant. Go into Configuration, Devices and Services, Add Integration, and search for Cloud. You will automatically find Cloudflare. Select it, and as you can see, it doesn't ask for a username or a password, it asks for an API token. And let's see how we can get this API token. An API token is Cloudflare's sort of a flavor of an encrypted entity that has permission to do stuff in your Cloudflare account. In this case, we'll create an API token that has the permission to update records in your Cloudflare DNS. Let's go back to Cloudflare and click on this little avatar right here and go to My Profile. Click on API Tokens and create a token. Click on Custom Token Get Started Give your token a name. In permissions, select Zone, DNS, and keep it include all zones. That's fine for us. Everything else keep exactly as is and continue to summary. Oh, sorry. The permission needs to be edit, not read, edit. Click on Summary and then create a token. Copy the token, you will not see it anymore. That's the last time you will see it. So make sure you copy it and then paste it in this API token field right here. And now Cloudflare will see the domain that you have registered in Cloudflare. In this case, we are going to choose this domain. Click Submit and it will ask you which of the A records that it, sees, that it sees in your Cloudflare account, which of them you want to keep updated. You can select all of them and you can select just one of them. So select your instance and select and click on submit. I'm not going to do it because it's a test Home Assistant instance. And going forward, the, integra the Cloudflare integration will act like a, a, a dynamic DNS functionality and will keep your A record always in sync with the IP address you are given from your ISP. So let's summarize what we have seen in this tutorial. We have seen how to create a, a record in Cloudflare. We have seen how to grab the SSL certificate to place in our Home Assistant. We've seen how to change the configuration in Home Assistant to use HTTPS and to use uh, uh, proxies and to use cer uh, certain proxies, uh, 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 certain subnets. We have seen how to configure port forwarding rules to only be applied to Cloudflare proxy addresses. We have seen how to create a firewall rule in Cloudflare to geolimit the availability of your Home Assistant. We've seen how to create uh, the Home Assistant integration to create a sort of a dynamic DNS functionality going uh, forward. If you've created a C name, you don't need it. A C name to your, uh, for example, Synology uh, dynamic DNS service, you don't need the Cloudflare integration. So guys, this is how I recommend keeping your Home Assistant uh, secured while still keeping it available uh, outside your network. Of course, I do recommend whenever possible, don't do even this method, use a VPN to access internal resources. But if you're not going to do that, this is by far the most secure way to do it. I hope these guys like this video. I hope you saw that this demon is indeed not all that scary. And I hope to see you guys on my next video. Bye everyone, stay safe.